Good morning. It's Ryan Seacrest, Sisney, and Gwen Stefani. Yay! The stylish Gwen Stefani. Thank you. I, I'm so embarrassed already because she was telling me that yesterday when I was talking about her coming in, I yeah. was saying I got to get my look on because she's always so stylish. <laughs> she was in the car and she heard it. And she heard it. I heard that. I, I know. And I'm I sorry. That. That's okay. I Actually, it's really fun. Like, it's so surreal. Like, Especially when you played Used to Love You for the first time. And it's such a, I mean, for me, for that song to even come out was yeah. like surreal because I just wrote it. Like, and I'm in the middle of like an earthquake. In the middle of life. Yeah. And um, and then it was on and it was just like the chords, like even when the chords come on, like my whole heart goes into like an inside out, like melting, like crazy. Right. like. And then, then you were like talking about my life, and I'm like sitting there going, "Wow, they're talking about my life right now on the radio." Yeah. It's well, surreal. Well, yeah, I, I can imagine that when you hear your song or us just randomly talking about you, you're like, "Oh my, what, what?" Yeah, right? what are they saying? But what we th- see, I forget that everybody lives here. That's the other thing I was just gonna say. Like, this is where I grew. Like, I didn't grow up in LA, but it's still Anaheim. like having yeah, OC. Yeah, it's like this is. It's even more weird when you grow up somewhere, and then all of a sudden you're on the radio there. Like, well, how does that happen to me? This song, I'm gonna play it in a second. Uh, it, 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 I mean, we uh, first of all, it's a great. It's. A, uh, did you hear what I said? I was like, I hate to love it. No, that's exactly what you said. Cause, and that's what I was saying to my own self. I was like, wait, this is all bittersweet. Like, right. Like, <laughs> I don't know how I feel. Like the night that it came out, I, I think I cried the whole night. Like I was like, yeah, yeah I think I'm gonna have to cry the whole night yeah. because. I'm so happy, but I'm like, it came out of something so horrible, so how does that work? But I'm kind of used to that in a way, because I was, the week that it came out was the actual anniversary of Tragic Kingdom, so the same oh, exact wow. 20 years later, like, that breakup record. That's and crazy. That, isn't wow. that, how that, is that's, that, that how, that's, that's the universe. That's weird. Yeah. And everything's like that right now, because I feel like I've been... I've been on this crazy spiritual like journey like in the last few years it all started with these miracles like one being getting pregnant with Apollo that was like what like what was like, that not supposed to happen I don't I didn't know it was I mean <laughs> weren't, weren't you making an effort I think um <laughs> yeah but I'm saying like Kingston prayed for it but that was like okay wow. go ahead keep praying but, <laughs> yeah, but, like, huh? and he, he said to me mom are you gonna have another baby I, said, I don't I think I I think we're good like this is, yeah you know this is doesn't really happen you know I just tried to try and explain it to him, and yeah. then he, like four weeks later, he was praying every night, and I got uh, four weeks later, I was pregnant. So so it, have... it really was a miracle. And then, then just all these things just kept happening, and then my life blew up in my face. And then, when did it actually blow up in your face? February. February. Last February. Did, so when did the day it, after the Grammys? The day after. Mm-hmm. So the public didn't know about that then. No. Right, because it was obviously. Not public for a while. Not for a long time, yeah. That's so, Are we getting serious right now? Uh, well, I just <laughs> I started getting I mean, nervous. If, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> it's like I, every, I, everything got awkward. No, no, I, no. I don't. I don't want to go anywhere you don't want to go. But I mean, it's kind of all in the song. I feel like I don't have anything to hide. Like I mean, so uh, the, what happened? <laughs> oh my no. god! Well, was I'm it, not going to go into detail. Was it difficult recording the song? Like, would you get you know, emotional? Wait, hold, hold on for a second. What What happened that you will tell us? Oh, what I will tell you is that um, I was married for a long time and now I'm not. So. And it was like it's a shock, and it, you know it was I mean? it was an abrupt, yeah, moment. Yes, got it. Yeah, and, and one day you found out whatever you found out. Yeah, but then you know, then you go through the whole process of like trying to see what we're gonna do next, and then then and you've blah, got blah, kids. Blah, 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 blah. You've got three kids. Right? I got three kids. Yeah, and where are the kids with you? Oh my God, you are serious right now. This well, is like I, it was so cold when I got in here, and now I'm so <laughs> hot. And I'm like, wow. But the, but you see the kids. <laughs> Yes, she of course I see the kids are my kids. Okay. Yeah. Right. You don't have to tell me the arrangement. But I, I listen to this song. Honestly, I, I, I mean, I've known you a long time. I listen to this song, and it, it is like the most vulnerable song that I've heard you sing. What's it's, It is really crazy. If we want to talk, if there's a whole like process of getting to this song because I started, um, I, I, I really wanted to make a record last year, right? Yeah. And I got pregnant, and then I was like, I, and then I had the baby, and I really wanted to make a record, and then I got the voice. So I, I was like, I, how am I going to do that? I'm right. nursing a baby. I'm doing the show. Like, I have the other kids. Like, I have so much going on. So I thought I would just kind of curate one like everyone else does. Like, I've done a lot of writing in my life. I don't need to prove that I'm a writer. Like, I find a really great song. I'll just do it. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm trying to convince myself. And what that's kind of what I did, and I created, like, this whole record, basically. And it just didn't feel right. Like it didn't feel right. And I, I, I was really getting very like, because my whole thing about me is like, 
I validate myself by songwriting. Like that's when I first learned how to do that or thought or did it. I didn't even know I could. That made me feel alive. Like that was my my purpose. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. It felt like. Right. And so when it doesn't happen or when I feel insecure about it or I'm like my brain just feels like a blank page and then it's like, oh, where did that go? Where did that magic go? You know? And so it, it wasn't happening for a long, long time. So then when this all went down, I wanted to go to the studio to write because it wasn't, it was like, I tried doing it that other way and that did not feel right mm-hmm. at all. Um, so I'm going to go in and write, but on the whole drive to go to work with this guy who, um, I don't know how that even came together, but this guy, Rick Knowles, who is just, he did like the whole Lana Del Rey record. He's like a cool guy, like real songwriter. Um, mm-hmm. And I just literally cried the whole way like to the studio, like, what am I doing right now? Like, I'm going to work with someone I don't know. Like, I feel, I just want to be in bed, like... But I did it, and I it was like a huge thing, like talking on the phone with my girlfriend the whole way there, going like, "How? Why am I doing this right now? Like mm-hmm. now I'm gonna expect myself to do this, you know what I mean?" And I got there, and we wrote a song together, and it was like him sitting at a piano, a guy I didn't know right there, like on the engineer, like it's really uncomfortable. They don't know what's going down with me. But that's the thing. So you had to express like your reality to them for this song. Yeah, well, I did, but it was like. It's like, you know, when you're like feeling like kind of like terrible and you're like trying to like skirt around like without telling like exactly what's going down to someone you just met. But my point of that is that that was when the channel kind of opened up again. And I'd been praying about that for years. Like I want so bad to use my gift. You know, I want to be able to do that. And so that was the first song. And then I went in with these guys, this guy, Justin Tranter and this girl, um, this this guy, um, Jr. And, and we went in the studio, and I, the first thing I said to them was, I don't even care, like, about anything. Like, I don't know who you guys are, but, you know, here I am. I'm not going to be insecure about this. I just want to tell the truth. Like, I just want to be honest and real and write something from my heart. I don't care if it's a hit. I don't care at this point in my life. This is all about me just using my gift. I don't care. And then we wrote the first song, which is called um, Red Flag. And then we do, then I was like, once that happened, I was like, oh my God, like this is happening. Like this is happening. And every single time I went in the studio, I would write one or two songs. And that's never happened. So I have this whole record like in like eight weeks. So when you wrote Used to Love You, that was like in the mid, like the latest, the last part of the writing. So when you go in and you write that song, did you drive home one evening or any day and say, I don't know if I can sing this song? I don't know if I can release this song because it was so fresh. There was, uh, to be honest, because I was still in the middle of like everything going down and I still kind of am, obviously everything's happening in real time. Like there was other songs that I definitely wouldn't put out because they just were too True. like, and, and then in fact, like they were too angry and like, the record company was like, listen, we really think your record's too personal and no one's going to relate to this record and maybe you should just put it out as an artistic body of work and like <laughs> maybe, you know, don't even think about radio. I was like, and when that happened, I was so like passionate and I was to the point where I needed to be in the studio. There was nothing else that mattered except for like being in there. It just was my was thing. Was it therapeutic? Yeah. And then... It was all that felt good. It, nothing else felt good to me. And um, and then they told me that, and it was literally like being punched in the stomach. I was like, the wind. I was Knocked like, you don't understand. It. God is channeling to me right now. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get it. I was like so passionate about it. And then the next day I went in and wrote Used to Love You. And it's weird because the lyric to the chorus was already written like the day after a major event happened, which I won't say exactly what it is, but you can try to think about what it might have been, <laughs> like a major event that happened where things got really clear. Um, and I had written that in the morning. And I remember writing it, but it was like with a bunch of other things that I had been writing, you know what I mean? And I went back and found it in my computer and I had like read it to them. And I'd said to them, I said, look, I don't really care. Like, let's write the opposite then. Let's Mm. write something super, like super personal. And let's write something that's like not commercial. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At all. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the whole time I was trying to write something not commercial, but that was just because I was just being rebellious. You know what I mean? Because how do you write something commercial? Like you don't, you just write. You you know what I mean? Yeah. Has Gavin heard this song? I don't know. So you have had no response about it. Did you just say the G word? <laughs> has has the, your ex heard or responded to it? Um, I have. I don't know. You should call him. I don't have his number. Do you? 
Not anymore. <laughs> Uncomfortable giggle. Uh, <laughs> so Blake is also on this show. Is he? Yeah. Who's Blake? Blake Shelton. Oh, the country guy. Yeah. And and I, I, I read these stories about the two of you. Are those true or not true? I think that has NBC did that, right? Two divorced people, like, at the same I'm, time. I'm saying it, it, it seemed like just too perfect of a story. It but, did, but too. It's, is it true or not true?